Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This week, I am turning my attention to the interior of Astra Roof. So this week, I am turning my attention to the radio. On the last episode, I was working on the speedometer. So check out my video if you haven't seen it yet. All right, so first things first, taking off that bezel is easy. Just stick your finger into one side and pop it out. From there, you can take a seven millimeter socket and zip off those three bolts on either side of the radio and pop it out. Next up, disconnecting the antenna cable on the right side and then disconnecting the three harnesses that are on the left side. Once you pull that out, there's one more harness to disconnect and you're at it. All right, if you look inside here, it looks like somebody's been in here before. Pretty much all of the wires are butt connected. All right, so a few days have gone by and I've gotten everything I need for my radio setup. Starting with my head unit. So I've gone with a Boss single din unit, something really low key. It can push out some really good bass. It's got some great reviews on Amazon. It's only 35 bucks and I can always upgrade later if I want to. Just looking for something that I can pump out some noise and enjoy my Bluetooth tunes while I cruise. I also got a dash kit. So first off, that comes with the car side of the harness and the radio side of the harness came with the radio, of course. And I've just used buck connectors to pair my wires together. Really simple exercise. Even the wires come pre-stripped, so you just join them together. Now, one thing that you don't know about my, uh, my Grand National, when I was doing the body work earlier, I actually deleted my antenna. So if you take a look with me, Here's the passenger side. The antenna would normally be right here, but I filled it and smoothed all, all of that out. There's no antenna here, which begs the question, if I don't have an antenna on my car, how am I going to be able to listen to AM and FM? And that is also solved by Amazon. So thanks to them, I was able to get this six foot long antenna cable with a glass mounted antenna. So you can mount this anywhere. It's labeled for glass, but you can basically put it anywhere that's going to get a, a clear view of the sky as long as it's not underneath metal. So what I'm thinking for this would be my dash pad. Mounting it right underneath the dash pad so it'll have a clear view of the sky unobstructed by metal. And it comes with adhesive and even this white label right here this is also adhesive as well if you look behind this sticky you'll be able to peel that away so we'll get this installed in the car we'll get everything plugged up here and we should have tunes in just a few moments i'm really curious to see how well this works I have some suspicion, especially since I didn't opt for a amplified antenna. Some antennas are amplified, so you would have to wire in power and ground to it, and it'll strengthen the signal that you can get from AM and FM. So I'm taking a risk with this, but it's Amazon, so if I'm not happy with it, I can return it. Installation is really easy. It's basically the reverse of removal. So you just reconnect those three harnesses, and then that final harness on the side will fuel power to your radio. On the cage of the radio, there are metal tabs that you'll just have to pry up and it'll press against that plastic bezel, preventing your radio from sliding out inadvertently. Here goes a quick test just to make sure. Looks good. Now I'm just plugging in those final two connections. There may be more depending on the type of radio that you went with. If you've been doing car audio for a while, you can only imagine how much smaller these new radios are versus the old ones. Crazy to think they took up as much space as they did. Finally, we have our antenna. I'm not fully installing everything, just making sure that everything works and functions well before I put the screws to it. Let's see what we get. So attempt one at getting this radio to turn on did not work. Let me show you what's wrong. So somebody's been back here before. If you take a look at this connection, which has all the power connections, this 
wire in the middle of the screen, the bottom right hand corner, you'll see what looks like remnants of a wire. And that's where my ground was. But somebody cut it right at that connection. It looks like something was there and somebody just snipped it. So without ground, this radio won't turn on. So here's what I'm going to do about it. I have this wire. I'm going to use this screw to ground to a metal spot within here. And I'm going to have my harness connector here so I can separate it whenever the radio needs to come out. And then on this side of the white wire, I'm going to tie that in to the black wire that's right here. So I'll be grounding from the, the dash frame over to this connection. If I had a terminal, I would de-pin this and just pop in a new one. But unfortunately, I don't. So let's get this wired up. All right, so now I've gotten the wire grounded to this part of the frame right here. I'll find a better spot for it once we test and make sure the radio is working. So what I'm looking for is in accessory and on position, the radio turns on. I'm looking for good reception on the radio and I'm just making sure that all the speakers work. So let's test it out. So accessory. on okay i have it comes on and on but not an accessory so i'll take a look at that so it looks good there let's try a known station Oh, there, there one goes. Democrats can't afford to lose Nevada if they fail to pick up any right, so here it is all back together sounds pretty good works really well and i still haven't figured out the whole antenna piece but i'll just stick to bluetooth for now and maybe once i get my a pillar pieces back in i can i can mount it up there just so i can get a really clear view of the of the sky <laughs>